Why? Oh, we wait, have to. We're seriously doing another one? I thought we were literally getting off in five minutes. I have to wake up for work. So I got to go. All right. You guys can do it, though. I don't mind. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of 5 Idiots Talking Toys. I'm Shane, and this is our podcast episode that comes out weekly on YouTube, as well as your favorite podcast app. Thanks very much for being here. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can go to 5 idiotstalkingtoyscom We'll get you there, and as well as all of our other links, merch shop, and our socials. Uh, we appreciate you listening or watching. We also have other videos that come out throughout the week on YouTube exclusively. Uh, toy hunts, reviews, unboxings, as well as our Wednesday wins and whiffs of the week. So thanks for joining us. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel on YouTube, follow us on the podcast app, and comment below. Let us know what you thought of the episode. Let's bring the boys in. John is here. Christopher and Brandon, what's up, fellas? How's it going, Shane? Thanks for having us. Oh, hey, Shane. Thanks for having me on tonight. You're welcome. Hi, Shane. Thanks for, for having me on. Thanks for being here, Brandon. Charles right. is um, not on the episode, so we're allowed to say hi so to we each can, other. So we can say, uh, yeah. Yeah, we can say yeah. hi on this episode. Yeah. So uh, we had our, uh, a New Year's episode recently. Uh, we got through the holidays. We're, we're now sitting here in glorious 2023. <coughs> can you? There's a cough button. Uh, 2020. <laughs> we were making fun of John for the cough button in a, in a previous episode, so I had to. Uh, so we're here. Here we are. Sorry. Correct. That's right. 2023, and we've made it through the holiday season. Uh, we have a topic that's interesting tonight. Uh, we're going to kind of blast through and share our opinions. What makes an expert an expert in the toy collecting hobby? Uh, obviously, there's all different levels. There's a lot of things to know about the different toy lines. Nobody is ever, you know, 1,000% an expert, really, in anything. I think there's always something new to learn. But, John, I'm going to throw it over to you. You've been in the collecting game for, you know, a bunch of years. You've been collecting, you know, privately in, in your younger life and, and now all the way to the toys, to the yeah. point, you, you know, you've done toy shows. I'm saying, you know, like, I only started yeah, yeah. collecting you know, uh, about eight years ago, I didn't collect anything. I mean, I'm 44 now, so I was collecting, you know, in my late thirties. Um, you guys have been collecting when you were younger than that. Um, but now, you know, you've done toy shows over the years, um, as a kind of a side hustle or just for the fun of it all the way to now having a toy store, a variety store yourself. What makes an expert an expert? It's a loaded question. It's not easy to answer, but you know, how do you know who to trust on what they're saying? How do you know that to be confident in what you share with novice collectors? What are your thoughts there? I think experience really plays a huge part in that. Um, you know, when you have when you have had these toys pass through your hands and stuff, and you've seen, I always make mental notes about things. Sometimes I even make physical notes about about things that I've seen uh, with with figures and toys and stuff like that. Um, but a lot of people, uh, think they're experts and mm. those people are the ones that I don't trust when they, when they, when they allowed themselves as an expert, I don't trust that person as an expert because usually they don't know as much as they, they claim they know, you know, I mean, it's just, it's like that with just about everything though. Um, but if someone else says, hey, you need to call Chris or you need to check with Charles or Brandon, they they know this figure or they, you know, then I trust that because someone else has um, has recommended someone to me. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, it, it's hard. There's so many toys out there. There's so many different variations and there's so many different um well, figures and, and accessories and stuff like that. It is, you can't really be an expert on everything. And uh, I, I think that, I think the biggest part of how, how do you know, or what makes an expert an expert is um, just, you know, the experience and the recommendations from other people that you can trust them. So, 
a big part of the toy collecting hobby now you know years ago it was a lot of toy shows it was a lot of toy shops and it still is but there's so much of an online community now and mm -hmm. there has been for years that you you end up making uh you know acquaintances and friendships with the people that you interact with you know even virtually but there are you know unlimited number of people now involved in your your hobby, your personal hobby. I'm talking to the people that are watching right now and listening. Um, you know, you go on there and ask a question. You might get 15 answers. You may not know 14 of those people. You know, you may never even heard their names before. So, uh, you know, Chris, I'll ask you, you know, what do you do in that case? Say you're a novice collector or if you're a novice collector in a given line. Uh, you talked recently uh, on an episode, our, our, our last episode, about collecting Lord of the Rings uh, figures use that as an example you you admitted you don't know enough about the line yet if you go on to an online forum you know and try to do some some research there how do you navigate the answers you're going to get and the information you're going to find um honestly i was going to do the work and the research myself mm -hmm. i was going to buy some loose uh examples on ebay that are going for a cheaper price i was maybe going to buy even like a mock or so and just look them over myself and just compare them and then i was just going to look at pictures and examples i really wasn't going to ask anybody mm -hmm. um i don't really know if there are so-called experts out there for lord of the rings or you know for the old knickerbocker figures honestly i don't i don't know i don't even know if there's even a group i'm sure there is a group out there but i'm not a part of it okay but i know going back to the original question of what's a so-called expert or who's a so-called expert mm -hmm. and in, in my opinion that is someone who's in their mid 50s to low 50s you've seen star wars in the movie theater <laughs> because we all know nowadays you had to this is going you had to have seen star wars in the movies as a kid and if you didn't you're not a real star wars fan okay <laughs> you had to start collecting the day that figure was released from 1978 on and you've had to have been collecting this whole entire time never selling your collection once those, in my opinion, are the only experts that you can ever talk to. The uh, Illuminati Club. Wrong. <laughs> All right, so to get back on track here. Um, <laughs> false. So, so I, I was looking through the groups, and somebody posted you know, a question on a, a resealed item, and um, there was some off-the-cuff off comments there about you know, why are you even asking? These people don't know anything. Obviously, you know, I, I don't know why it was posted. Obviously, it was a reseal, and everybody could tell it was. And the question was based on tape. You know, it looks like tape from the seventies, and all these kind of questions. And and it, it was it was posed out there as, hey, I know there's experts out there in this field. You know, what do you guys think? You know, whether the post was ridiculous or not, obviously it was a reseal and it was tape and who knows when it was tape. There, there's there's no experts on, you know, when an item was resealed and who resealed it and all that. To me, that, that was a little bit of a ridiculous question. But um, I found an expert one time. His name was Scotch and he could tell me all about the tape and how. <laughs> no. So so there are experts out there. I would say we all know different names of people that, that come up that know about their accessories and, and all that. And, and I was always wondering how it is that they know, like where is this database of information on the factories and all the different types of things. And I, I realized there's not a, and that's when I first started collecting. I was like, how do these people know all this stuff? And then I look on the back of these figures and I see like a little S or I see like a K or, mm -hmm whatever on, on a footer and i'm like ah a smile and cater okay that makes sense you know and looking at that i'm like well the only way people would know that these accessories exist for these items is to take them from the mint on card or take mint on card examples either whether they come off the bubble or not and document those things and and take pictures of them and compare them to other examples and then you would know that there's you know then you would have an understanding of what factories and what figures came from where now the vast knowledge that people have about 
all of those things, I, it just blows my mind. So I know that they have done their research and, and gone through there and, and, uh, and done those things. Uh, you know, I, for one, have not done that, but I know there's people that have done that. But I always wondered if there was like a book or some sort of like, I just, and I think because I don't know anything about the foreign figures that that much, and I know there's books written about those, but I just wonder where they got this information from to write those books or where they get this information from to just discern the difference between um, all these different figures. I mean, I was going through the other day looking at Yodas, a couple of my Yodas, and I picked a snake, a brown snake up, and I'm like, well, okay, this one has an EPM and some paint on it, but then I look on – you know, one of the websites, Variant Villain, I think. And I'm just like so confused as to what variant I have. And other people just know right away when they're looking at it. I just don't understand how you can be such an expert in that field unless you've been spending so much time doing the research. And I think, you know, th there are people that do that. But um, but there's certain things that I just think that there's no experts for, you know. like Well, there's some people involved in the hobby that – that, that, that that's their favorite part of the hobby or maybe you know a close second to actually collecting the figures but the fun for them is doing all the research and and figuring that out and and some of those guys have made websites there's a lot of forums out there so some of this stuff has been crowdsourced over years and years um and they've compared you know examples of accessories and stuff with each other um that's what i've come across you know not reading it too closely but understanding that that's where all this information is kind of derived from but you know when you're when you're in the the groups and you are a more novice person or if you're just trying to find out more about you know one figure or certain you know coo country of origin um yeah you've got to navigate through people who will give you answers but you don't know how reliable those answers are um, it is always good to get some recommendations from other people in the group of, of, of who the experts are, get referred to somebody who really knows who they're talking about, but you've got to do your own homework too, right? Well, you, I was going to say that. Go in blind. So for me, if a person truly ever wants to learn something, at least the way I was brought up, it was always, you have to do your own work. You have to get your own hands dirty. You can't just keep asking somebody. The people that just keep asking the questions constantly and just getting the answer but not knowing why it's the answer, they don't learn anything. It's the people that are having the collections, the figures, just multiple of stuff passing through your hands and they're learning on their own of why something is the way that it is and i always tell that to like my wife even if it's like around the house when she like wants me to like do something in the house or do this or fix that i don't i always say you do it but i'm going to show you or tell you how to do it but i want you to physically do it with your own hand so you can learn how to do it because i think you know, being an operating engineer, at least how I was brought up, it being in union, when we were fixing stuff, working on motors and pumps and working on all this, like all this um, on the machinery, you didn't just stand over someone's shoulder and watch someone. You had to get in there and fix it with your own hands, make your mistakes and learn from that. That's, you know, how I was always taught. So I think with collecting and just learning, which is what I was saying with the Lord of the Rings figures, that's how I'm going to do it. Like, you know, I'm going to do it my myself. Trial and error. I'll make my own mistakes, and I'm going to learn from them. Yeah, that's a good analogy. I think of the same thing often as well. If I just do everything around the house that I know how to do, I always do think about that. You know, what if I'm not here one day, and my wife is going to need to know how to run basic <clears throat> things in the household? You know, it's just a good something. Analogy. Yeah, something yeah. basic. Yeah, I don't know. I just feel like the uh, new generation just wants to be told things, but they don't want to actually do it. So I, you know, I just always think physically doing this stuff is always better learning than just being told. Not yeah, because uh, yeah, not doing your own homework. That's a way to throw money away real easily in a in a in a hobby like this. Um, yeah, stuff is I, expensive, and you know, gotta gotta know what you're doing. I think uh, a lot of that has to do with we have the wealth of the world's knowledge at our fingertips. And, you know, you can just ask Google a question and they'll show you how to do it. Or you can watch a YouTube video on how to do it or whatever. And they think that then everybody thinks that they're an expert in, in doing that thing. But yeah, unless you've experienced it, like Chris was saying, unless you've gotten your hands dirty, unless you've, you know, 
dug through bins of toys or, you know, or what, whatever, you know, whatever application you want. Change out an element in a water heater. And, you know, you don't understand it. And I always think that I always used to say to my students that understanding is way better than knowledge. If you understand mm, it, yeah. it's way better than if you just know about it. Right. You know, this is yeah. this is why I think John's Reaper around the videos on YouTube, honestly, were I know they didn't do so good on views, but this is why they were so useful. Because how many times a in a week, on every group, do you see someone just post a picture of a Yoda cane and say, real or fake? And then everyone goes down the line of commenting of what they think it is. But you never know why. Why is it real? Why is it fake? What do you need to do or look for? There's John now on the video showing you how you can bend it, turn it into a little pretzel, all the things to look for, just stuff like that. You need to like know why and learn it yourself. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I'm going to jump in here and speak for, for Charles, even though he's not here. He had an issue recently where he was trying to be helpful in one of the groups. Somebody asked about an accessory and asked if it yeah. was fake <laughs> or legit. And he politely said, it's, it's a fake. It's a repro. It's a reproduction accessory. It's not real. It's, you know, then he gave the name of what it was. It has a, it has yeah. a name. A salt burn. A, a salt, salt burn, burn repro yeah. and so he even gave that and so somebody could have you know gone to a number of different sites and looked up it you know, and confirmed that for themselves but then all of a sudden there was like you know a handful of people chiming in and going nope he's wrong it's real it's a real accessory uh that guy's wrong and you know charles responded no I, i'm not wrong this is what it is go look it up here it is you know this is just trying to help you out and then he said to us privately <laughs> Why do I even bother? Like, why am I bother racking my mm -hmm. brain or, or, you know, beating my head against the wall? I was trying to help the one guy out. And then there's four other guys who think they know better and they're wrong. And then it was, it turned out Charles was right. You know, it was confirmed in another group, but you know, you know, Charles was the expert there. He knew the right answer, but there was four or five other guys who thought they were the experts and then the guy who answering asking the question doesn't know who the hell to follow, you know, because people are arguing with each of, other. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So, you know, even if you are an expert in some regard, or you just if you just know the right answer, you still can't always help somebody out. It's it's tough. No, but it's always better when someone has an answer more of yes and no and real and fake. You need to be a little bit more descriptive of why it's real, why it's fake, why the answer may be yes, and why it may be no. And most of the time, you don't see that. You just yeah. see yes, no, real, fake. Yeah, I think that would help out a lot if we see <clears throat> the why. Why is it real? Why is it fake? You know? Yeah. 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 It'll be a little, a little yeah. more credible. Yeah, that lends to the credibility of the person who's offering. And that way, everybody yeah. learns because... Yeah, you know, you could sit there and say it's real or it's fake, but why? Tell me why. Like, how did you know that? Yeah. How do you know? Is this a cater or a unitoy? Like, because it's well, fake, dummy. Well, well, look at it, and then they always refer to the website. Look at the website, Variant Villain or Imperial Gunnery, and it's like, well, there's more okay. to it than that. There's definitely. But more to I, it. I look at the website, and I still, I'm like, okay, I see two pictures, you know, and I'm like, <laughs> what am I looking at here? How do you guys know? You know. Yeah. That's why it's like, it's always hard to call someone an actual expert, you know, are there experts? I don't know. Are there people that are way more educated and know more? Absolutely. You know, I can date back to about 15, 20 years ago when I was collecting my mock run and Charles was sitting on eBay buying all these accessories and selling accessories on eBay and going through these little parts. And I used to laugh at him all the time saying, you're literally wasting your time selling a com link on eBay, just one little com link and mailing this away. I'm like, I, I was like, who the hell is buying that? I'm like, who's doing that? So he's had his hands dirty. He's been doing this for 20 years with the, you know, with the accessories. So whenever I have a question, I go yeah. to him and I ask him. And just recently, Brandon knows and John knows this because I reached out to them. I had a guy that I sold six Rebel Commando pews to, and he messaged me. I didn't really like the way he messaged me, but he came out and messaged me and said, hey, 
I just went through your box, even though he got it four weeks prior. He's like, these are fake. These are not real. I'm mailing these back to you right away. You better mail me some real ones now. And he goes, and your line of reputation or your reputation is, you know, is, is on the line. That's how he ended it. And I'm like, wow, like, okay. So immediately, like I did my research. I kind of knew what I was doing. I sent it to Charles, Brandon, John. I reached out to a couple of other guys like Thomas Fagan and Stephen Hopwood, who's a rebel commando collector. And they all mm -hmm. said, it is 100% real. It's all good, blah, blah, blah. So I, I told the guy, I was like, it's real. Like, that's coming from an expert. I'll, I'll call them experts when it comes to that. I have no problem. Yeah. 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 And, you know, what's funny is, like, <clears throat> even, like, like with the Rebel Commando rifles, there's like what five five variants. There's there? six different kinds from six what I want. Six variations of it, all colors you know? and everything else. Yeah, so I mean, sometimes that can even fool an expert or an expert. Um, you know, like we had this whole thing this this past year was V five crazy. Past summer, at least summer was. It was V five crazy. It only comes with this figure. It only comes with the Boba Fett from Taiwan. Nope. I had a carded example of a Death Star or a Death Squad Commander. You guys remember this? Had a Death yep. Squad Commander with a V5 blaster in it. Wow. And so there's always like an anomaly. I you know, know someone. So sorry. No, go ahead. I was going to say, I know someone who has a Boba Fett Taiwan U graded, which means AFA. Cut it out of the card of the blister, graded it, and there's no V5. Mm -hmm. So that that always throws me for a loop because it's like you ask, you know, I'm sure there's people that are well versed in this topic, and we already listed some of the names and all that of the people that know all this stuff. But like, there's obviously different mix. Like, they threw all these figures in a bin. They threw all these accessories in a bin. Half of these accessories were shipped to another factory to be put together. Like, that's the stuff that blows my mind. It's like they were sent from Hong Kong to Mexico and then they were put <laughs> together there or Hong Kong to Spain and they scratched out the COs. And I'm just like, I'm like, yeah, hey, how do you know that? You know, I, I love to know the history and how you figured that out or where it's written or who you interviewed or, or who at the factory you knew that told you that. And B, like, how is it that you know, you know, there's obviously mistakes like that death squad commander that has a V5 in it. So, you know, so how did that happen? So where's the expert yeah. on that? Is it, there, there's nobody, nobody's a hundred percent on this. Yeah. And, that's, yeah, and no part. offense to a grading company, but mistakes can happen just because something's you graded doesn't mean 100% absolutely never a chance in hell that there was maybe a, an accessory swapped by accident on, of course. on a desk. Yeah. I'm not calling out any specific, you know, company or, or, or saying that that's for sure, but you can't base a whole hobby on like, Oh, the, uh, you know, the Taiwan came with other versions of the blaster. That's one example. You don't know, you know, yeah, I think we need to change the language a little bit and say, you know, the most common blaster that was with this figure mm. was this version. Like a Luke Stormtrooper with the solid black or the blue black. Solid, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Say so the most common blaster that came with the Luke Stormtrooper was, and it was the black, the blue black. It's the actually common. the blue black, and 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 when grading companies only started grading them with the solid black, guess what started happening more? It only Pe came with. The Luke Star the Luke Stormtrooper only came with a V1C, a black V1C. Well, the minute the grading company would come out and say we're only grading it with a solid black, they started buying the Thal Jobins and the Kezi Bonds, ripping them open and stealing the black blaster from them yep. to grade it with the Luke because mm -hmm. everyone was like, oh, well, this Luke was on a mock, but it doesn't have the solid black. Now they're not going to grade it. And that was a huge contributor of all these mocks being damaged was yeah. because of that. Yeah. Which which is why they need to change that also. Yeah. Well I just want to know where people get this information from. Like Well, you know. so you've heard about the blisters yellowing, right? And they've started on the 48 back and after 
and um, because they changed the fire retardant that was used in the plastic they went a cheaper route yeah how do you how do they know that i have no idea now <laughs> i don't i i it's a chemical composition I heard that like 20 years ago. I've heard it like 10 years ago. I've heard it the same way as always. So somebody long time ago found that out and knew that. But someone found out that from the 48 backs on, which is why most of the time the first 12s, 31 backs, 45s, whatever, they're usually clear depending on how it was stored and stuff like that. They're normally clear. And that's why anything usually after the 48, which is like the Jedi stuff and power of the force, they're always yellow because they changed something in the fire retardant that was used in the plastic, like a cheaper version, and they didn't hold up. And it just made the blisters yellow, which is why the Trilogo ones are clear because Trilogo is not from here. It's, uh, you know, overseas. And the Palo Toy cards held up because they're not from here. That's overseas, the you know, the blisters. So, like, stuff like that. H how did someone learn that or know that? I don't know. It's like the, was it a Toll Toys Vader or something? Which which one comes with, like, different parts from different factories? Like, I just don't understand, like, you know. That's, that's the Taiwan only, I think. Like, how do people... I'd love to know, and if anybody knows out there, please chime in where they got this information from. Like, is it just stuff that's been passed down from? I want to know, like, generation of collectors. If these or, people are the experts. Folklore. Like, please, please <laughs> share. Like, there's always people. Well, those parts came from this factory. And then, how do you know that? Where did this information come from? Because then you can say, okay, well, then you can trace it back, and then you know. But I know this is a little, little bit off the off the topic here, and and. What well, makes an expert an okay, expert? Charles. But I think research, research makes an expert an expert, and mm -hmm. and doing your own homework. But I'm just, for me personally, and I, I mentioned this in a different episode, like Lily Letty, like where's the book that shows me everything? And people go to this website. Well, these websites don't really help. Like, show me three different pictures, and I'm like, I'm not. Even, I don't even know what I'm looking at. What resources you know, like, did the websites use? Give me some resources here. Show me. Show me on paper where it says this or do a video or whatever you know i'm always curious as i want to learn more don't just send me to a website that's half filled in with and you know with some pictures and doesn't doesn't even show me anything really you know so like where is this information coming from <laughs> they just you know? show they just show a back of a leg a couple of things that are circled and arrows yeah. pointing in this direction <laughs> so I, I always look at it i go like this uh charles, yeah charles what is <laughs> Yeah. Charles, what is this? Like, like what? Yeah. I don't, you know, tell me how this is different. And how do you know that? Where is the Mexican guy that put this together that told you that? You know? Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I think the realization that we're coming to here is that it's it's hard to, to call anyone an expert. There are not a lot of experts out there in in this hobby, we'll, we'll you know keep it in, inside of the toy collecting hobby, but there's not a lot of experts who know everything. There's a lot of very knowledgeable people who know a lot about their, certain areas of this yeah, hobby. Their own little niche, right? And they've mm. they've also been handed down. Uh, you know, I jokingly called it folklore, but they've been handed down an explanation for some of this stuff that is generally accepted. And they've been collecting for a long time. They've had a lot of their own experiences. They have a lot of their own examples in their own collections. So those are the people that you can lean on because they're very knowledgeable in the hobby. Is there an expert out there that knows everything that went on in the Lily Letty factory? No, there, there honestly is not. Because we watched that documentary. You know, we've watched uh, that interview that happened under the Spanish language interview. He got a lot of information out of a former worker of the factory that people didn't know before, but still there were tons of unknown aspects to how they created the figures, what the differences were, where the parts came from, how the factory closed. I mean, just using this as an example, I don't know if there's many Lily Letty experts for star Wars out there. I just don't think there's a lot of lockdown resources on that topic. So you do the best you can as a collector. Um, you ask around, you well, make some friends in the hobby, and you look to see who you can rely on. To kind of you know debate that subject, I have a Lily Letty non-Sonic over overstock 
uh, prune face, right? And mm-hmm. I know for a fact that prune face, the head was in the woman's right pocket when she walked out of the factory. <laughs> Just the head was in the right pocket. You want to know how I know that? Because I was told that. She right. told me she walked out with just a head in her right pocket. Oh, you bought it from uh, you bought it from Isabel. Yes, I bought the head from Isabel. Right. So okay. she was able to tell me that. So that's how I know that the head, which is an overstock, non-sonic welded, right. Lily Letty, came that's, from her right pocket. And that's the problem is because all of the primary sources are probably dead now. Yeah. Yeah. You know. All the ones who really knew everything is secondary source at least. Well, the thing too is, is you have to remember we. Uh, th- I'll I'll say this, and then we're going to wrap this episode up. But the the Kenner folks who were here, and some of them we've met at conventions, um, who the ones who are still around, those were the people who were planning these toys. So they mm-hmm. actually do know a lot about what went into planning them. Um, you know, sculpting designing. them, sculpting them, designing them, and then um, dealing with these various factories in the manufacturing process and approvals of test runs and stuff like that. When you start getting into the foreign factories who were basically given a set of plans to follow, you know, those are not, there's no designers involved in those, in those setups. They are production manufacturing, you know, oriented. So, you know, there was a lot of stuff that, you know, mistakes that happened, wrong paint, you know, apps were used, uh, you know, short pours, all kinds of funky stuff that it was just bang it out, bang it out production. So we have the, you know, we have the, the, the fortune of having some of those uh, originators in the Kenner folks in this country. But the other, other places, these other foreign international figures, versions, they were just pumped out of a factory. All kinds of stuff went wrong with those in buckets. So, and there's in no the documentation there. You know, like it's in Mexico, they had a factory and they're pumping out plastic figures. You know, they were told how to paint them. They did the best they could, and that, yeah, that some was the of, end them, of the story. Some of them ended up on Letty cardbacks. The other ones ended up on U.S. cardbacks. With yeah, if you know, you know like, if if Gertrude was painting Darth Vader black and she ran out of black, you know what she used? A black sharpie. Done. Simple. <laughs> Sharpie. Darth yeah, Vader's think, molded. He's molded. <laughs> and so, and I think the bottom line is that none of us would be. I don't think any of us would call ourselves experts by any means. No. No. No clue. Yeah. I mean, we know what we know. We like what we know, and we're willing to share what we know. And you know, if you want to. If you want to believe us or not, trust us or not, that's that's your prerogative. But John, what's the name of the show? Five Idiots Talking Toys. Exactly. We're not, the last people that will tell yeah, you we're experts. It's not five experts talking toys. <laughs> it's not five <laughs> But we if all, you put, among the five of us, we all yeah. know a whole lot. Correct. If you put all five of us together, you, you get... Like three quarters of an expert. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> yeah. If you actually stick all five of us together, we might make half an expert. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. And I don't think anybody, I don't think any of us would presume to call ourselves experts. No, absolutely not. Right, right. Anything. So, you know, uh, the, the last thing I'll say is there are people who enjoy the hobby in certain aspects so much that they will be on those message boards. They will be on the groups. And they'll be responding to questions all the time. And you know what? They're not all experts. There are some people that are really knowledgeable. They know a lot of stuff. But there's also a lot of people who, you know, their their favorite part of the hobby is not being on Facebook and commenting all the time. But they do know a lot as well. Correct. And so you might Correct. get referred mm-hmm. to them by a friend or something. But mm-hmm. in in short, do your homework the best you can. Make sure mm-hmm. you're spending your money in a way that you feel confident with. The, the collecting hobby is expensive. Um, make friends in the communities, uh, and then and then and kind of just learn if there's some resources you go to that are really trustworthy. But and, there's not a lot of experts in this stuff. And for the love of God, there are some questions that you keep in your circle that you don't <laughs> post. Give Publicly. us a good example. <laughs> I'm not going to give you. No. But there are some questions where you're just like, okay, maybe I should ask this just to my close circle. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Some, some questions are kind of like, uh, really? You really need to ask that? 
<laughs> and I do know that there is a certain Yoda collector who loves people to ask him questions. Ooh. Not talking about Brandon. I think Brandon knows who I'm talking about, though. Yeah, I know who he's okay. talking about. <laughs> loves questions. <laughs> All right, fellas, that's going to do it for this episode of Five Idiots Talking Toys. What makes an expert an expert? Uh, I don't know if we ever landed on an exact answer, but we gave you our opinions. We want everybody to be safe and enjoy the collecting hobby. We appreciate you watching the show. We're always going to share the knowledge that we have, the knowledge that we've collected, the things that we come across in the hobby on a daily basis. So we appreciate you watching and listening to us. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Visit 5idiotstalkingtoys.com for all of our links, and we will see you next time on 5 Idiots Talking Toys. Good night, boys. Good night. Later. Bye. Bye. Correct. <laughs>